Greetings and shalom as we enter into the season of Advent once again. Hi, I'm Tim Coles. I'm the Director of Music and Community here at First United Methodist Church of Pittsburgh, and we welcome you this day and on each Sunday during Advent. Uh, we enter into this season of Emmanuel, God with us, and we take that seriously. We at this church, like many other churches over the course of time, have associated different words with the different Sundays of Advent in candles. Hope, peace, joy, love, all leading to the Christ candle, Emmanuel, God with us. It's a custom here at this church uh, that we reach past the familiar words, all of those words that mark the season of Advent, and infuse them with new words that help us to explore more deeply our relationship with each of these Sundays. This year, we've got a slew of challenging words we think will be important for you as they have been important for us. Destruction, disruption, decision, desperation. Those are very challenging words, and this year we hope that you will question your own perceptions deeply on all of these. But today, we consider those who are in desperate moments in their lives. Maybe it's not them. Maybe it's you. Maybe it's me. There's usually a power dynamic at play when the word desperation is used. On either side, where is the love in that? Prepare ye the way 
Good morning, First Church. This is Pastor Tracy, and welcome to the fourth Sunday of Advent. Today, we're going to continue on our Advent journey, our Holy Advent journey, and you are welcome to bring your heart and bring your questions and bring your doubts and bring your joy, bring everything that you have inside of you to worship today. I would also invite you to perhaps join along in the chat room, uh, ask a question, um, introduce yourself, and there is a way also that we can get connected with you if you wanted to email the church or have questions, but so very, very grateful that this is a way that we can worship together and know that on Sunday morning when you are watching this or whenever you're watching it, the hearts and the minds and the lives of all those with First Church are one. Merry Christmas, Happy Advent, and all that comes with that. Amen and amen. Will you please join us in the call to worship? Our souls magnify the Lord. Our spirits dance to the song of God, the Liberator. Is there love in desperation? With a powerful arm, God sweeps the arrogance from our hearts. God drags tyrants down from their thrones and lifts up victims from the depths of despair. Where is the love in desperation? God will entice the hearts of those with more than enough to share in the joyful feast of those who hunger. We find love even in desperation. You know, Nancy, when Pastor Tracy asked us to consider where is the love in holy desperation, after I read the lectionary for today and thought about it several times, I, I did what I often do, and that is I went to the Oxford English Dictionary to look up what it said the definition of, of desperation was. And I found the usual first definition that really had to do with despair, the state of being in despair. But the second definition was quite interesting, and I want to just read it to you. Despair leading to recklessness or recklessness arising from despair. A desperate state of mind in which an account, a desperate state of mind in which on account of the hopelessness or extremely small chance of success, one is ready to do any violent or extravagant action, regardless of risk or consequences. And I thought that really spoke to today. And I think what you're gonna say it also speaks to today. Yes, it does. But it is the season of peace, they say. In the second mask advent, we ask, where is the way to peace? It is cold now and dark. So we put up tiny lights, stars above twinkle, 
Cardinals come before dawn to our feeders. The deer and rabbits munch our last crops. Chipmunks scamper over roots of winter bare trees and disappear underground. Still, afar and here at home, there is desperation. Twisted factory metal of those terrible tornadoes, Kentucky, Illinois, and our neighbors, afraid, hungry. Where is the hope? We find it in unexpected places, this different kind of hope. And there is love, too, as we carry out our small acts powered by that larger hope, fueled by promises. The birth of a baby remembered now, the manger bear, and then that miraculous birth of Mary's boy child, Jesus Christ, come in a stable. And in Micah, and they shall live secure for now, he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. And in Luke, he has shown strength with his arm, but we say we are weak. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away according to his promises. It is a different kind of hope that we have, but powerful. There is joy around us as we find ways to love our neighbors, responding to illness, to the traumas of loss. We bring food, send a text in the evening, and awake to our important work, caring for each other, walking together through the wintering forest on rocky paths full of dogs and squirrels. There is healing there, God's creatures blessing us with songs, and we can take off our masks. We are desperate to breathe, but alive with the joy of all this scurrying and chattering that lives among us, reminding us in this darkest time of the year to join others working for a healthier planet. May the light shine in our hearts as we light this love Advent candle and make way for hope. It has been promised. When forced to grasp unyielding pain, invite the love within its strain. When forced to grasp unyielding pain, invite the love within its strain. Veni, veni. To grasp unyielding pain, invite the love within its strain. When forced to grasp unyielding pain, invite the love within its strain. kids. Welcome to family time. I'm so glad that you're here today. Let's start with our prayer of gratitude. Loving God. Thank you, God, for our friends to play with some hangouts. Thank you for jokes that make us laugh so hard we cannot breathe. For yummy food and to eat. For pets to comfort us when we are sad. For family to love and care for us. Amen. So all through 
Advent, remember Advent is the season when we prepare our hearts for Christmas. We prepare to celebrate the coming of Christ and we prepare not only our hearts, but we also prepare our homes and the church by decorating and putting up trees and decorating those trees. And maybe you make cookies to take to your neighbors or something. And so we have been making a Jesse tree with all of these ornaments to tell the story of the family of Jesus. And I hope that you've been doing that too. Maybe you've been following along, uh, coloring your Jesse tree ornaments and putting them on your tree at home. So this week, if you've been following along with a Jesse tree, you will have an ornament about um, Jonah and the whale. And you might color an ornament about Daniel and the lion's den. But last of all, because this is the last week leading up to Christmas, you will color an ornament with the little baby Jesus. The thing that we're celebrating all this season, we're preparing our hearts for the birth of Christ, which tells us that God comes to us. God comes to a little baby born in a barn out back and put to sleep in a feeding trough for cows and donkeys. God comes to pregnant, unmarried teenagers, and God comes to kids just like you. And God comes to all of us again and again and again and again. And that's what we remember and that's what we celebrate in this season of Christmas. So I hope that you color a little baby Jesus ornament to put on your tree and celebrate and remember that God comes to you. And I hope that you know as you do that, that God is always coming to you and always with you right where you are. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, we thank you for this Advent season. We thank you for the stories that have come alive to us again. Pray that with the story of Elizabeth and Mary, that we would find anew where the love lies in desperation. Amen and amen. I love Advent. I love Advent because it is a season that the church brings together people and gathers people, and we wait patiently for the Lord. And there is a rhythm and a pattern that the church follows with this by lighting Advent candles the four weeks before uh, Christmas Eve, the four Sundays. And we begin Advent by lighting that first candle. We sort of go to the end. 
of, of our story because that first Sunday of Advent where we light the candle of hope, we remember and we visualize and anticipate the coming of Christ in final victory, triumphant over death. And we hear words of that, of that waiting that we have for the second coming of Christ. And then in weeks two, which is the candle of peace, and then in weeks three, which is the candle of joy, we remember and uh, bring to the front of our story the coming of Christ's ministry that will happen as Christ walks the earth. And then the fourth candle, the candle of love, which we light today, reminds us and brings us to the story, the part of our story where we remember Christ in the manger, where we once again participate in the incarnation. And you know, in this year at First United Methodist Church, we've been intentional about grounding ourselves in a holy advent in a holy advent to grow deep and wide and not just a shallow approach to the words of hope, peace, joy, and love. It's almost like a colander that we use in cooking, but rather than pasta that gets, and pasta and water, we put hope and peace and joy and love into that colander. And as the easily, uh, the water and that which is easy to see and easy and doesn't have any bumps or stops or conflicts or any blocks in it, flows through the openings of the colander very easily. And what's left in the colander What's left in the colander that has to find a new way out is the stuff of our holy advent. And what's left and what often goes not accessed or opened is necessary. It is vital and it is good. So with this advent, we have asked some difficult questions. We have asked, where is the hope in destruction? We have asked, where is the peace in disruption? And last week we asked, where is the joy in decision? And today we ask a, a, a consuming question of where is love in desperation? These are not easily answered questions. They're not easily accessible to finding quick, shallow, skim-like answers over hope, peace, joy, and love. Today, on this fourth Sunday of Advent, we were given some beautiful text from the very first chapter of Luke. And I love this text for an obvious reason that it's one of the very few texts and scriptures that we have where only women are talking with one another. There are no male voices in this text, in these few short six verses, in this beautiful coming together of relatives. You know, and sometimes it's really, really easy for me and maybe for others to just simply put ourselves into the text that we read and to find where we are in that story there. But this Holy Advent and with the questions that we've asked, that is not an acceptable approach to stop or place to stop in our story. We need to, to grow and, and look deep and, and to wrestle with the conversations of what do we have in common with this text, where the, the context of the text that we're given, the context of the life that we're living today. Because this is a very intimate scene that we're given in Luke chapter one, and it's a very desperate situation. It's a very desperate situation for these two women. Think about this, Elizabeth. Elizabeth is older. And she is, in the world's eyes, way past any childbearing years. And, you know, that's how women have found their worth, being married and having a child. 
And Elizabeth, for years, for decades, has been um, seeing the glares and the looks of others in society of failure, of shame, of being humiliated. Elizabeth was the walking definition of someone who was desperate to find value in society. And here it is. She is of worth now because she is carrying a child that we know to be John the Baptist. And so her life is not so desperate anymore because society has placed great worth on her. But in comes her relative fleeing from her situation, her desperate situation. Here's Mary, much younger, 13, 14 And she is with child. And the rules of society say that when you're a woman with child and you're not married, you are just as shamed. In fact, the odds are not in Mary's favor that she should be able to live through this. She should be stoned. She should be publicly humiliated, humiliated by Joseph to go and find her own way. Mary was desperate, and so she fleed to her relative. And Elizabeth, who had just found herself out of her desperate situation, she should have shunned Mary. But what happened? The child growing inside Elizabeth was aware of the coming Christ that was growing in Mary. And John leapt inside his mother, and Elizabeth knew that all the prophecy was true of the one who was coming to be blessed. And she, putting herself in a risk of being shamed once again in society, embraced her unwed, young, pregnant relative and took her in. It was a desperate situation those women could be in danger. You know, and, and we find ourselves, what, what do we have in common with that text today if I can't put myself in Elizabeth or Mary's position? The common core that we have of desperation is that these verses reek of desperation, and our world reeks of desperation. And the question is asked, where is the love? And the love is when Christ is made known and can be felt and seen by others. We know that the love was found when Elizabeth embraced Mary. So where is the love found in our world today? Because think about this, think about this, that our world is in a desperate situation. Just this past week, When I think of desperation, I think of families in Kentucky and and in the Midwest sifting through what used to be their homes and finding a broken picture and and finding, you know, half half of a piece of furniture. That, where's the love in that desperation? And I say to you, it's when Christ is made known through the actions of others. Just like when Elizabeth knew that Christ was near, she embraced her her relative and kept her safe and pulled her in. So we are challenged and given the opportunity to have Christ in us be aware by others, by helping, by helping. And then the, the cause reaction to these tornadoes that happened We are in a desperate need of an awareness of the climate change and the harm that we are doing to the creation, to to the planet. Young people gather around the globe to try to find out ways that we can stop causing harm to the planet. Four-hour tornado, an F5 tornado, in December If this is not Christ in some way coming out to us and telling us that we need to do something, to come together and do something, um, we're not listening. 
And then we have this, this pandemic that we are still desperately trying to get through. Desperation. We want this pandemic to be over. We've had arguments about vaccines and, and studies and school boards with masking and not masking and private businesses, mandates, and all this kind of stuff. We are desperate to get rid of our masks. We want to sing in church. We want to laugh out loud. We want to see our children smiling. We are desperate to get these masks off. But you know, somewhere, probably in your neighborhood or in your community or in your school, there's a parent who is desperate to keep their four-year-old child alive, who has a, a, is completely vulnerable with their immune system, not being able to fight off anything. And that parent is desperate for us to keep our masks on until it's safe for their child to live again. So, so where is the love in all of this desperation that surrounds us and seems to overwhelm and engulf us? It is when you feel the prompting of the Holy Spirit in your inner self, in your heart, in your mind, in your voice, in your actions, and whatever you're doing, when you know that Christ is near, when you know that God is with you, it will come from you. And the desperate moment will be calmed. It won't be erased from our memory or for our future steps, but there will be calm. There will be hope. There will be peace, there will be joy, and there will be love. Be like Elizabeth. Know without a doubt that the one has come and is coming and will be. Amen and amen. This season, we remember to perceive ourselves and one another differently, not through the lens of hierarchies, subtle or explicit, but through the life of God as sites of divine incarnation always brimming with potential to enflesh love, choose justice, and live transformed lives together. In gratitude for all the power God has given us to reorder our worlds, let us bring our offerings together with thanks. Holy One, we know voices are still crying out in the wilderness today. Beloveds, proclaiming the truths hidden away or forgotten. Brave and tender ones, drawing attention to the wisdom our collective world needs. With gratitude, we bring our offerings and pray that our lives and resources would faithfully point to the sources of love that liberates. Amen. Let us receive the benediction. Be a people of love. Let love live in your heart and share the love of Christ with all you meet. Share love by loving those you see regularly. Start by loving your community. Continue by loving communities that are facing desperate moments. Share love by loving those you do not know. How do your actions affect the rest of God's creation? Share love by praying for our world. In this Advent season, we need to see, feel, and share love. As you go out into the wonder of God's creations, share love, joy, peace, and hope with those you encounter. Amen and amen. Catch up.
up with Gavin McQuarrie. Good morning, kids. Welcome to family time. I'm so... <laughs> 